This video is sponsored by NordPass. What exactly is Google Cloud Platform? What tools and services does Google Cloud Platform offer that, as a BI analyst, you might need to use? Can you say Google Cloud Platform five times really fast? Why don't you have a go at that while we roll the intro and I'll see you on the other side. Not that easy, is it? Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Finer, helping you do more with data. So this video is just going to be a fairly high level introduction to the Google Cloud Platform. For those of you who may have heard of it before, but are otherwise unfamiliar with it, or maybe you've never even heard of it before. Either way, I'm going to explain what Google Cloud Platform is, give you a guided tour of the interface, and we'll take a look at a couple of the tools and services you have at your disposal as a BI analyst. Let's start with the basics. Let's call it GCP for short. Well, GCP is a wide ranging suite of cloud computing tools and services provided by Google. These tools and services enable businesses and individuals to build, deploy and manage applications and services on Google's infrastructure. So basically, rather than investing in and installing these tools and services in-house, you can rent them from Google and they live in Google's cloud. Obviously, there are loads of benefits to renting as opposed to building in-house infrastructure, such as flexibility. If or when you no longer need a tool or service, you can simply cancel it. Whereas if, for example, you've bought a physical on-premise server and you didn't need it anymore, or you wanted to upgrade it, you might have to sell it. And by that time, it's probably lost a lot of its initial value. Another great benefit is that the tools and services you rent are very scalable. If you need more computing power, more virtual machines or storage, you can simply provision them with a few clicks and they're available straight away. It works in the opposite direction too. If you need to downscale something, you can. All of this ultimately means that there is great cost efficiency as well. Because GCP has a pay-as-you-go model, you only pay for the resources and services you use, which takes away from the need for upfront infrastructure investments, and lets you scale your costs based on your actual usage. Another of the benefits of a platform like GCP is that because the tools and services are hosted by Google, you get all of the reliability, availability and robustness that comes with their huge global infrastructure. With on-premise infrastructure, if for example something goes wrong in the middle of the night, you'll more than likely need someone on hand to physically fix stuff. With GCP, everything is monitored constantly and there are systems in place like backups and redundancy, meaning there's little to no downtime at all. Then, of course, with GCP, you get access to all of Google's security infrastructure, both physical security at their data centers and other things like state-of-the-art encryption, DDoS protection and threat detection and prevention. Obviously, with security, there's always a human element to consider as well, like compromised passwords, which is why you should check out the sponsor of today's video, NordPass. NordPass Business provides a hassle-free solution for accessing business accounts, allowing your teams to work uninterrupted across devices and apps to optimize workflow. Log into your accounts in seconds, securely share sensitive data with colleagues, and make payments efficiently, all backed by the highest standard of cyber-secure technology. With NordPass Business Password Manager, you can securely store, generate, and access all of your passwords in one place. All done anytime, anywhere via an intuitive cross-platform interface. But NordPass isn't just about passwords. It also lets you store an unlimited number of payment details close at hand, offering a simple and secure way to not only efficiently make payments and purchases, but also to share that information with teammates and whole departments on demand. Because communicating sensitive data via email or instant message isn't great. NordPass offers world-class security via a comprehensive suite of tools, including their data breach scanner, password health checker, and multi-factor authentication. See NordPass Business in action now with a three-month free trial by going to nordpass.com slash adamfiner, using the code adamfiner. Thanks, NordPass. So now let's jump onto my computer and I'll show you what the GCP interface looks like. And then we'll take a look at a couple of the tools you might use as a BI analyst. 
To get started, you'll want to go to cloud.google.com. You can actually start for free and get $300 in free credits to fully explore and conduct an assessment of Google Cloud. You won't be charged until you upgrade and you've got 90 days to use those credits. And as you can read here, new customers who verify their business email will get additional free credits to use while exploring and evaluating, which is great. You'll need to go through the full setup process by entering your account details, adding a billing account, etc. And once you're all set up, every time you want to access GCP, you'll need to go to the console by either clicking the button here or via the URL console.cloud.google.com. That brings us to this welcome screen. What you're seeing isn't an account I actually use, it's just created for demonstration purposes. You have these quick access buttons here, and if you'd like to see a list of all the available products, just click here. If you're looking at this and thinking that it looks pretty daunting, don't worry, I had exactly the same reaction when I first discovered GCP. As a BI analyst, the good thing is that you won't be concerned with the vast majority of all of these products. The ones you will use are under the three categories, storage, analytics, and databases. So we'll concentrate on those and talk about some of the products in those categories. Let's start with cloud storage. You can see here that a new project called My First Project has been created in the account. You'll need to have at least one project set up in order to create, enable and use all of Google's cloud services. According to Google, a project organizes all your Google Cloud resources. All data in cloud storage belongs inside a project. A project consists of a set of users, a set of APIs, and billing, authentication, and monitoring settings for those APIs. So for example, all of your cloud storage buckets and objects, along with user permissions for accessing them, reside in a project. You can have one project, or you can create multiple projects and use them to organize your Google Cloud resources, including your Google storage data into logical groups. So all of your data will be stored in what are called buckets. Buckets can contain CSV, JSON, XML data files, through to other kinds of files like images, videos, emails, PDFs, there are a few limitations to the objects you can store, and I've left a link in the description so you can check those out. As a BI analyst, you will mostly be storing structured data like CSV files in your buckets. Once the data is uploaded, it can then be accessed by other GCP products, like the next ones we'll look at shortly. Let me quickly show you the process for creating a new bucket and then uploading data into it. The name you give your bucket must be globally unique, meaning that it can't exist already anywhere on GCP. I'm going to call this Learn BI CSV Data. You can then choose which region or regions you want your data stored in. You've got lots of options. I'm going to choose a single region in Paris because I'm in France. You then choose a storage class, which will be based on how often you'll want to access the data. Anywhere from standard, which is for frequently accessed data, to archive for data you won't need to access more than once per year. Or you could just select auto class and let Google optimize the data storage for you. Whichever you choose, you'll see the cost per gigabyte per month on the right here. I'm going to leave mine as standard, which costs just over two cents per gigabyte per month. Peanuts. Next, you choose how to control access to the objects in the bucket. This can be either uniform, so all objects have the same access controls, or fine-grained, where you can set different permissions for individual objects. Finally, you have optional protection tools and can decide between Google and customer controlled data encryption. Then hit create. You get this message saying public access to any data will be prevented. It says keep this setting enabled unless you have a use case that requires public access, such as static web hosting. You can change it now or later. Just make sure the option is checked and hit confirm. Our new bucket is set up and we can now upload files, folders or transfer data in and out from places like AWS and Azure. 
I'm going to just upload a simple CSV file. And that's it. I can click on it to see its metadata, edit access, delete or download the object. You have a handy monitoring dashboard as well. OK, so we have data stored in cloud storage. As a data analyst, what can we do with it now? Well, that brings me on to the next two tools we'll look at. The first being BigQuery. BigQuery is a fully managed cloud-based data warehousing and analytics platform that lets you analyze large volumes of data quickly and efficiently using standard SQL querying. Even though the name is most definitely warranted in that it can analyze billions of rows of data insanely fast, you don't need to just use it for large volumes of data. You can use it for any size of project. To start working with BigQuery, you'll need to add data, which you can do in different ways, like with local files, Google Cloud Storage data, or connections to external data sources. For those, you'll first need to enable the connection API. If you don't have any data to work with, you can add any of the over 200 public datasets that Google makes available. What we're going to do is to create a new data table using the CSV file that we uploaded to our bucket. So I select Google Cloud Storage and then navigate to the CSV file. If the file type isn't recognized for any reason, you can specify it here. The destination project is the one we're in. And if you're wondering why this doesn't say my first project, it's because this is the ID of that project, not its given name. In terms of data sets, we don't have any loaded yet, so we'll create a new one. We'll call it LBI-Sales, and then choose a region where the dataset will live. I'm going to choose Paris again. You can also choose whether to enable table expiration and specify a default maximum table age. Any new table created in this dataset will be automatically deleted the specified number of days after creation. This is useful for temporary data which doesn't need to be preserved. I'm going to set it to 60 days. There are some other advanced options, but I'm not going to go into those now. Instead, I'll just hit Create Dataset. We now need to name the table we're going to create. I'll just give it a generic name. I'd recommend you check Schema Auto Detect because that'll save you having to specify it yourself. When auto detection is enabled, BigQuery infers the data type for each column. BigQuery selects a random file in the data source and scans up to the first 500 rows of data to use as a representative sample. BigQuery then examines each field and attempts to assign a data type to that field based on the values in the sample. Partition, cluster and advanced settings we're not going to touch. I'm just going to click Create Table. Now when we expand our project, we can see the dataset and the table we created. If we want to now query it, we can click the three dots and choose Query. I always recommend doing it from here instead of the Create Query button, because you get a pre-written query as a starting point instead of a blank one. Once I write my query, you can see how much data will be processed by running it here. When I run the query, I see the result down here, which I can then save or explore in Sheets, Looker Studio or Collab Notebook. You can save your query from here. OK, so that's enough of an introduction to BigQuery. I'm sure you get the idea. Next up, we're going to discover another tool, SQL. On GCP, you can provision instances of MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server for you to be able to build cloud-based SQL databases to store your data. Let's choose MySQL and we'll see how it's done. In order to create an instance, you have to enable the Compute Engine API first, so we'll do that. We'll give our instance a name, lbi-mysql, and generate a password. You could choose to have no password if you're just messing around, but otherwise it's not recommended. You choose the MySQL version you want, and then you have two pre-built configurations to start with, either production or development, the configuration details of which you can see here. But if you want more fine-grained control over your instance, you can specify the machine type and storage options here. You'll need to also specify a region. 
Another important setting is whether your instance will be private or public. Now, public doesn't mean that it's open to anyone, just that, for example, if you wanted to access your instance using a different tool outside of GCP, you need it to be set to public. To connect to it, you'll still need to do so with a user and password combo. Those are the very basic settings we'll look at. Now I'm just going to hit create instance. From this overview page, you can see both the public IP address and the connection name of the instance that you'll need when wanting to connect to it. If you need any help connecting, just hit this link here. So we've got our instance set up and now we need to create a database within the instance that will store our data. I'll just call it DemoDB and leave the other two settings unchanged. If we go back to the Overview tab, we can do things like importing data into the instance, either SQL or CSV. However, I'd recommend using a third-party tool like Workbench for MySQL to do these kinds of things. The same goes for creating databases, in fact. If we go to the Users tab, we can see that there's a root user set up, but if you want to create other users who can access the instance, you can easily. So GCP is Google's cloud platform, but there are other platforms that you might also be asked to work with as a BI analyst. The two main ones are Amazon Web Services, AWS, and Microsoft Azure. They all offer similar tools and services, so you might want to check them out too. And if you're interested in a career in business intelligence as a BI analyst, why not enroll for my upcoming BI Career Starter Program? a fully accompanied program that takes you from zero to BI analyst in 12 weeks. To find out more, click here. Thanks very much for watching and thanks again to NordPass for sponsoring this video. Link in the description. See you soon for another video. Bye.